it. <laughs> you ready? Hello! <laughs> Payback time. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to another Friday Cocktail Hour. And Cody's here. And we're going to um, be producing a very unique and um, I think very exciting cocktail today. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe and share with your uh, friends, uh, especially your whiskey friends, because this is really quite a phenomenal cocktail. So why don't you tell us about it? You're just like setting us up for failure there, aren't you? <laughs> no, this is... I do enjoy this one. And this is something we just play yeah. with. We're after cocktail hour a previous time, we decided to essentially play with one that we did and changed it all up essentially. Yeah, basically rewrote the whole thing. and It kind of started out as we wanted to make it more similar to the name of the cocktail and then it just turned into our own. Right. So we call it the Texas Brush Fire because we decided to choose all Texas whiskeys. And don't freak out, not all of this is going in there. These are our choices, and no. and we have a ton of Texas um, distilleries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have a here, grab mine. <laughs> yeah. We have a ton of Texas distilleries, craft distilleries uh, in our area and throughout the state, and so there's so many choices you could choose from, and so it doesn't matter which distillery you get or whether you're choosing different. Now, our cocktails, we've chosen a different. Um, bottle from a different distillery in our mixes so it's completely kind of statewide to yeah to show off but what we have here is we have um, really the linchpin of the whole cocktail system and it's going to be the one that needs to be in every one pretty much you could substitute you could substitute it. but this is uh, acre distillery out of Fort Worth this is their cinnamon girl so it's a true cinnamon whiskey this runs at uh, 90 proof. So this isn't a, a cinnamon liqueur like Fireball or anything like this. I don't know what other distilleries here in Texas are using um, cinnamon in their, have a cinnamon flavor. I'm sure there might be because there's so many distilleries out there. Hard that, to tell yeah. this way because this is a unique way from what other ones tend to do. I mean, you've seen other ones we've done on the channel right. that have done more candied and this is more... Yeah cinnamon spice so if you're gonna make a true texas brush fire like we're um talking about you need to pick up a bottle of cinnamon girl uh and it might be available in um liquor stores throughout the region uh at texas right now um th but this is the the linchpin the, the keystone of the whole cocktail what do you suggest if they can't get cinnamon girl um, say they're up in new york or something Cinerator did we okay. tried it originally with Cinerator and then we thought about doing it all. So with Cinerator, a, a more of a better. higher proof cinnamon, not like Fireball or... It's a little sweeter and candier, so it's not as... Okay, so that's really important spice. to know is most cinnamon flavored whiskeys are flavored with um, the candied cinnamon. Yeah. And this is more of the the actual cinnamon, the, you know, the little brown cinnamon sticks. tubes the sticks so um there is a difference in flavor so it's not the spiciness it's it's more of the flavor yeah it's like if you were to essentially put ground cinnamon yeah. kind of a thing are you making it now we're we gonna go through these we're gonna do oh, okay. one part at a time so we also have um iron root they're promethean now iron root's got several different um kinds we chose the promethean as a bourbon whiskey that we want to use. This is running at uh, 103 proof. Uh, Iron Roots up in Denton, Denison, up, up North Texas. So we chose Iron Root and we also felt that a smokiness to this cocktail is, I mean, you don't have to, but smokiness is really great. So we chose the Balconis Brimstone which is available almost anywhere in it's the U.S. quite available, but yeah. it's, I think it's considered a harsher, more niche one from mm -hmm. what I seem to have heard. So those are the ones that um, we choose to have. But here in Texas, you have a huge selection of different whiskeys. So we have um, uh, Martin Greer Distillery out of Venus, or used to be. Um, this is his bourbon. 
Uh, if you can pick up a Martin Greer, it's almost 100% corn, um, but 100% Texas corn and Texas everything. And we um, haven't actually tried that honey. one with this, so we're going yeah, to see how it's it honey goes. Based. It's honey based, studio Ron's chiming in. Um, definitely worth picking up. We have Acre, another Acre that does a cinnamon girl. This is our new smoked single malt. Absolutely amazing. If you've never tried Acre, um, it's probably my favorite. I will keep saying that. They don't pay me. Um, I'm not telling you to go there. I'm just saying it's my personal favorite um, distillery here and in to Texas. Point out, Acre has enough variety. You could do this right all from Acre right. because they have their smoked. They have several smoked, don't they? Now they have this smoke, but they have a couple of single malts, the Long Hair Jam. They but have, then they have they have a they whole have variety their own bourbon. Well. Um, Striker is another good smoked. Uh, Striker from Andalusia down in, I think, Blanco, Texas. Another one of my favorite um, distilleries. That's probably the first Texas distillery we visited and got. Ben Millam, uh, one of the better bourbons out of Texas. Um, that's another choice you can choose. What's this one? Austin Still from, of course, Austin. This is their award-winning bourbon. A great selection. And then there's some uh, kind of hard to find bourbon. Oh wait, I think I got one more here. TX is probably the other bourbon that's um, pretty predominant throughout the United States that's from Fort Worth, Texas. And then there's some hard to find places that you actually have to go to their distillery. You might be able to find some in some local stores that are close, but we have um, the Jacob Weldon out of Cleburne, Texas. Um, pretty good bourbon. We have, Schitt's Creek, nothing to do with the show. Um, and Schitt's Creek is near Blanco, Texas. Um, and uh, they don't sell this anywhere in stores that I know of. You actually have to go there. But this is a fabulous um, place. We really enjoyed their um, bourbon and they whiskey and maple. And I mean, they have some They really had cool a large stuff. variety, including some fruit flavored ones mm -hmm. that were really good. Yep. And they do a barrel club. You can actually go down and mix your own barrel and they'll store it and everything. Uh, Blackland out of Fort Worth, Texas. Another one of our up and coming favorites. We really enjoy Blackland. And then of course, if you're watching this channel, you probably know about the other channel and you know that you have to go to Crowded Barrel. But Eleanor, by far one of our favorites now. Um, the Eleanors are obviously sourced but matured and finished here in Texas um, from Crowded Barrel. Uh, a definite must if you can get it. Questions from the audience. Yes. He was asking did they aren't they starting to distill their own now and yes they are. But I don't think they've actually um, started selling any of that. Well, because they've got to be in a barrel for several years. Yeah. So Cody, you're gonna go ahead and tell us what we're doing here. So I just mixed one to three, I guess. It's just one to three? E no. <laughs> Equal parts. So I just did a half ounce of each of these okay. just to keep it small because you don't this is all just essentially straight. So it's not watered down or mixed into anything else that brings the alcohol content. Right. So you're essentially drinking what you would drink out of the bottle. Or so the this is basically a three drinks, right? Yeah, this is, if you were to do an ounce of each, it would be three ounces of just straight out the bottle. And, and again, remember, we're talking about 100 50, proof. 53% <laughs> alcohol. Okay, so 106. And then... 103. Yeah, 51. And then this is... Is 100. 40, or 90. 45%, so yeah. 90 proof. So this is a very powerful drink. So yeah. you could do a one ounce of each or a three quarter ounce each. We're choosing to do a one ounce because I think we're gonna try some other ones. Yeah, we're gonna try a couple of variants of options we've shown here. So can I? Yep. So um, we have stones here if you want. Um, to so just, these won't dissolve? Yeah, it's not gonna um, dilute. If, if you wanted to dilute it like you would normally do one, you could and it, it still tastes fairly well. I, I really, I have my Stones, I mean, I, I have quite a few. I hardly ever use them because... They're in the completely different area of the house and we never think about it. And they're just so hard to 
remember to clean on time so they're all sticky. True. And you can't drop it in a glass and we tend to just drop things and if you drop that you're going to shatter your glass. So I'm metal. getting the smokiness of brimstone here. That kind of um, sage brush type of smokiness. I'm not sure. Scrub what, oak. Is it scrub oak? Okay. Mm -hmm. It has a fairly distinctive smoky flavor because of that scrub oak. Because it's different from a lot of other ones that you know, oak from a barrel right. or anything. It's just different. Little hints of the cinnamon. Oh, wow. And the stone really makes this like really good because it's, it's chills it just enough. It chills it enough that it's not gonna be overpowering. You're getting that nice cinnamon from the acre, a little bit of the smokiness. I think the cinnamon uh, girl and the Promethean are counteracting the harshness of brimstone because a lot of people have That's... problems with brimstone. That's what we found that happens with the cinnamon and smoky ones, because mm -hmm. we tried it some that are just essentially smoking right. glass, almost, or that we found and have done are smoking glass. If you don't know what um, brimstone is, brimstone is almost like the Lafroy or Ardbeg of American whiskey. It's got some smokiness to it. It's kind of the uh, uh, of whiskey. Now, I'm going to say, if you're not hooked on staying with Texas, and you can't find brimstone. There are smoky whiskeys out there, and off the top of my head, Del Bach out of Arizona has got a really good smoky one. I don't think you care for it as much, but. But it also doesn't have to stay within whiskey bourbon. Mm -hmm. It can be a scotch, because when yeah. we first tried it, we it did the... Ile. Yeah, we did, we did. Or we Isle. tried like a, a, a smoky Ile, um, and we did have a, a cinnamon, right? It was originally Cinerator. Okay, Cinerator. Uh, was Shildag. it Shildag, uh, Isle? I forgot. And something oh, else. Oh, it was just Hayburn, I believe. Oh. It was amazing. Just a regular bourbon. It was really good. So um, definitely think about this. What else you got going for us, Code? I was thinking to, let's see. Again, the linchpin here is going, there's one right there. I want to clean oh. one. <laughs> um, the linchpin is going to be the, the cinnamon. Cinnamon girl will be in all of them just because it, it's more of a cinnamon drink that you, or... It's a true cinnamon whiskey. Yeah, but I mean like this drink, mixed drink, is to play with cinnamon right. flavor with other things. So I think since we'll do something different is maybe the single malt. So we're going to look at um, the... Acre single malt. The Acre single malt, also the same distillery from... Um, our studio audience is like, where's our taste? The same distillery's uh, Cinnamon Girl. This is a COVID world. We're not supposed to share. Oh, okay. Um, so we got our Cinnamon Girl. Um, smoke from Acre, and then what do you want? The Striker? Or do you we'll want to use that more. as another smoke? We'll do that as a different smoke, which it, it goes well. We tried it with several variants. So. I think we should do... I think we should do something not smoked. Okay, I think so, we should do the Ben Millen bourbon in moderation. I did pour that in there, right? Yes, you did. Okay, just double checking. So okay. this one? And this is just straight bourbon, so yeah, this would yeah. work perfect. We think he poured it in there. There's a lot of distraction going on. Yeah, it looks like I poured yeah. it. I honestly closed up the bottle and completely forgot what I did. So now are we doing a uh, stone in this or just straight? I think just straight, but let okay. try this one. So this one is Cinnamon Girl, the smoked whiskey from uh, Acre, which has just come out. It's fabulous. And Ben Millam, um, straight bourbon whiskey. And I think Ben Millam's got a new one, uh, Millam and Green. Oh, a, a lot more smokiness to it. That's, that's pretty good. So this one has surprisingly more smokiness than the, the first one with the brimstone. That one seems also a bit more sweeter from what I remembered. Like the scrub oak didn't take out the sweetness of it. Okay, so the difference though is we had the cube. True. That the coldness probably took it out. But it is nice. Oh, sweetness. And I kind of like that. Too bad. Ben Millam is so expensive because 
but I still think I like the first one better. I do because Brimstone's pretty much my favorite. Okay. And I'm finding that it's my favorite. I guess so. I'm passing this. Am I passing? What? No. I thought we put it in the Splatoon. <laughs> okay, so let's make... Oh, you got two more glasses here. Yeah, I figured we'd try You're a like a real variant. Off timey. <laughs> so, Cinnamon Girl. Yep. So, so far I'm thinking I like the first one. Yeah. And the... The possibilities here are almost endless. And we're doing a variety to where we're doing cinnamon grill and then a whiskey and a bourbon. Mm -hmm. You can do a whiskey and a scotch, bourbon and a scotch. And it's gonna change <laughs> as you do it, like, so. We're calling it the brush fire because of the cinnamon and the smokiness. Yeah. So those are the two things that you really need to think about. But you can play with the flavor of it. And Let's we're do doing one to one. Strikers are last you know, even smokiness. Amounts of each of them. Striker's the last smoky we got. And then we'll do non-smoky at all, see how it goes with that. Do harsh, woody flavors, maybe. Okay. What do you want in this one? Mm, so we'll do Striker and we'll do Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek? Yeah. Or Martin Grip. Why don't you? You're just thinking. Um, so Martin Greer is because it's corn, and um, honey based, it's gonna be a little bit it's sweeter. It's gonna change the whole flavor too. So what do you wanna do? Do you wanna try it? I I don't know. Let's go ahead and try it. Try it and see what happens, cause that's a good flavor. Oh yeah. In there. It's definitely. Yeah, because it's 100% honey instead of sugar. And corn. Corn and sugar. Yeah. And it has a variety of different smell there. It's a, it's a completely different flavor, so it may play really well or not at all. Okay, hardly any hints of smoke on this one. Of course, you know, this is my third drink, so I could be like, ah. Hmm? A little bit it more is, of the... Uh, striker. The Striker, the Martin, Martin Greer. Greer, and the cinnamon. A little bit more sweetness of, of the honey and lemon, or not lemon, honey and vanilla and not as much of the cinnamon. Definitely sweeter. And it's gotta be because of the Martin Greer. And Stryker is a very powerful um, it, liquor, but it's not pop popping up in there. Yeah, cause it's smoky, but it's not smoky smoky. It's not. right. It's not like this one or Brimstone or a Smoky Scotch or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of more mellowed out. It's kind of a sweet because of the because of these two. And I think I that's what I like about this, wrote, this one. Texas Brush Fire is that because of the possibilities, you can make variations as long as you have the different things. You can make variations to your liking. Yeah, and it doesn't have to stay in Texas. We're just we're showing off. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Well, we were really excited about this drink and about keeping it to local Texas distilleries. Yeah, um, so, so uh, oh, what? Uh, you had me pull up my thing after sound check, so maybe uh -oh. I'm rubbing <laughs> on that the whole time. Okay, so you said a half of each, right? So this is our half cinnamon. Two and, and a half ounce each. Two and a half ounces? No, a half ounce each. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we see you. <laughs> we see you. Our studio audience, so if you don't know, Andy's in the studio now. He's normally not here on cocktail hour when we film. last time. I think it maybe he was here last time. But um, he just doesn't know he's in the studio and not up here. Okay, so now I think I want to try... <sighs> There's nothing smoky here. What do you think? Let's do the black land. Yeah. And Blackland, I think, is 80 proof. I think we need to have an intervention for another audience member. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit less. It's a little less than a half ounce, but. So and a few of these we're trying for the first time. Yeah. And then I think I really want to try Eleanor. Um, Crowded Barrel, but I think there's an open Eleanor over there. Didn't you already put three in there? Nope. Oh. 
I wasn't paying attention. Or actually an open Eleanor here. Uh, this one's this will make up that smoky or harsh bourbon flavor. Hopefully. You know, I'll make sure I get a full half ounce now. You went over. Well, made up for the Yeah. Do you want a stone on this one? Yeah, let's go ahead and do a stone. So far, the first one that we chose, which was Brimstone, um, Acre, Cinnamon Girl, and... The other oh, one. Promethean from Iron Root, where the is my favorite. It has a nice variety of flavor from the cinnamon to the harshness of the Brimstone mm -hmm. and the bourbon flavor of the Iron Root. So I think Promethean. Cinnamon Girl's the dom dominant aroma oh, yeah. here. It's more of a cinnamon drink. No, in this one specifically. Oh. There's not much smokiness. Should get some woody flavors from that Andalusian. Definitely. It's a lot fish. more... Oh, it's... I think that's what, a hundred and... Like... Twelve? Chapter seven. Yeah, this... the Andalusian chapter seven. It is a hundred and fourteen proof. Yeah. And it's, you can taste it. It's, so unless you already have these, they're all going to be different because they keep doing different chapters. They're already up to, what, nine, ten, something like that? Eight, I believe. Mm. So this one is definitely more woody, more caramel chocolate to me. Um, the sweetness of the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the sweetness of the cinnamon girl. Not smoky, but that woodiness goes well with cinnamon, makes it sweet. Yeah, I think that um, this is probably my second favorite. And of course, you have all these combinations to work through. Yeah, you and just, you can find what you like because it's you just go with what you're trying. Right, and you can try less of anything. You're just gonna have to linchpin it with the cinnamon girl. So here's all the different ones we've tried. Well, these are we haven't tried, but and you could probably try something like Fireball as well, Cinerator. I just want to go for a true candied one because it will overpower everything, and you should cut down on mm -hmm. the cinnamon in there. Maybe yeah, do a, you know, half of the same amount you're doing for everything. Yeah, else. find a find a cinnamon whiskey that's higher proof, that you don't mind yourself by itself. So, after trying all this, I think that for me the first one was the best. Yes. But I think that my alteration, because we could all have sorts. And by the way, we have more Texas whiskeys than that are on here. These are the ones that we chose for um, various reasons. I think. I would, you know, linchpin it with the uh, cinnamon girl. I would definitely do the brimstone, but I probably would do the Eleanor as the yeah. third one. Because when we originally did it, it was nice because the brimstone has some woody flavors and smoky, but it's it's kind of harsh in its smoky flavor, not mm -hmm. as much in its woody. And so I wanted to try a bourbon that gives it the nice woody right. char flavor and then the cinnamon. So I think... Yeah. I think switching these brimstone, so, Eleanor, and cinnamon will go So well. really, when you're you're thinking about making a Texas uh, brush fire, we actually just finally settled on that name in the last little bit. Yep. But on the Texas brush fire, I think these are the two real key ingredients: is that cinnamon whiskey and that smoky whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you're not Mike. <laughs> no, but the Eleanor, Eleanor is good, and the Martin Greer are the two best ones. Okay, so Andy says um, that Martin Greer and the Eleanor are the two best. Eleanor is number one, Martin Greer is number two. Did I, oh, here's the other Eleanor. Whatever you can find, but this is absolutely phenomenal to me. Yep. This is probably one of the best cocktails we've made so far. I think I really like... And I like the way of doing this cocktail where we're talking about different variations. Right. So when we come up with our own, I think we should do this. And I think that um, each of these distilleries probably need to consider this kind of cocktail. Like a, a multi kind of collaboration with each other. Oh yeah, like come out... Mm -hmm. We're on the bottle with the little tags that you keep not wanting to use where it gives you cocktails on the little taggy. Yeah, when we think about cocktails, they should just put he it. just goes through, looks at tags and goes, I got one. I have like 15 in here, but you just <laughs> don't want to use them. 
But it would be really good for them to, because I mean, there's a lot of collaboration with distilleries well, here in it Texas. It seems like uh, most distilleries in Texas are trying to collaborate or talk about each other all the time instead of ignoring that they're there. Mm -hmm. They're not competitors. They're competitors, but not competitors. <laughs> right. They have their partners, council. basically. Yeah. <laughs> Almost, seems like. They acknowledge and promote each other's existence officially. Tell us what you think about this kind of combination. What what smoky whiskey, and again, we're talking about American craft whiskeys. If you want to do scotch whiskeys, then that opens the door quite a to bit a for you. a large amount. Yeah, a much bigger peat combination. Smoke still worked very well with... We're trying to find one that's peaty, and they have Andalusian peat, but we don't mm -hmm. really have enough of it to try it we're very small on it if we had it andalusian peat smoked would have been on here. yeah our we just reverend don't have oak, a new bottle our reverend oak is like maybe really small. maybe an ounce left because um, that was another one i really wanted to try with it but the striker is pretty smoky true i think that if you're gonna think about doing scotches um you know you have a whole gambit of eyelids to to use but then again what really makes this is that cinnamon yeah you should try and find a cinnamon, either cinnamon girl, or try any other cinnamon that's similar that isn't meant to just not a liqueur blackout. Yeah, <laughs> so definitely leave in the comment what other cinnamon whiskeys out there that you think would be good that's not a liqueur, not a a hot stuff or a hot dam or a um, fireball or you know, I'm. I'm borderline okay with the Cinerator because it's a higher proof, but um, is there distilleries out there that have a true cinnamon whiskey? We have had a tough time trying to find cinnamon flavored either rum or whiskey that we have liked and we have found Cinnamon Girl and a couple others. Yeah, and we do have a cinnamon rum we really like from Three but Roll. we've only found one yeah. cinnamon rum we've really liked. Most of the cinnamon whiskeys are candies. So that begs to ask too, um, could you put three rolls of cinnamon rum in here? No. <laughs> okay. Answered. <laughs> I haven't tried it, but that does not sound like it would be good. Cinnamon three roll rum sounds good alone. You no. can try it. Definitely not. good. Oh, so Andy, why don't you come on up here so they can at least hear you. These are great. With the stones, they're okay. I think these all all of these drinks need like one or two ice cubes in them to make them really yeah thin. you could do an actual ice cube and it'll mellow yeah. it out they're over gonna time. pop i think actually may I, even bring I'm out the stuff they're over there. there and i'm going to put an ice cube in them because okay that's going to make them way better than the stones right so you're getting that dilution and also adding volume to it so it can last and a little it, longer yeah. The ice is more cold than the stones. Right. And it diffuses well, and colds cools faster. What about not doing ice and just pulling out your rock glass from the freezer? You could do that too. Because yeah. if I had a freezer in the bar, which is on the bucket list, I would keep my rock glasses in there. Yeah, if the, the glasses was ice cold and you poured that drink in there, I think it needs to be ice cold. Yeah, okay. And that would make it, it would just make it so much better. You can go to another. sit down now. <laughs> Tell us what you, uh, combinations you like. Um, give us some suggestions. We'll be willing to try it. Um, definitely think about picking up the Cinnamon Girl, at least as your keystone linchpin of this whole cocktail. Um, make sure you hit the like and subscribe and share this. Check out the merchandise. We got our little cocktail aprons. Um, check out the merchandise. And this is really good. A little bit too many cocktails tonight, but this was really good. That's why we need to have an intervention for <laughs> someone. For Alex has got all the cocktails in yeah. there. So as I, we'll, we'll go in just a minute, but as I'm drinking the cocktails and handing them over, they're just going around the room. And they did ended right yeah. there. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.